So this video is about making the spindle bracket for my spindle assembly. So this bracket over here, we're going to make the pattern for it and then we're going to eventually cast the iron into the moulds. So let's go over to the CNC and I'll finish this video off with going into some of the spindle assembly design. So I'm using some double-sided sticky tape to actually secure the MDF to the CNC bed. But I'm putting some masking tape down first because the cheap tool station double-sided sticky tape, which works quite well, is an absolute pain to get off the aluminium bed. So I put the masking tape down first and then the double-sided sticky tape adheres to the masking tape. Um, this works quite well for me. Um, I thought about actually using some masking tape on the MDF and superglue and two seg segments together, which was recommended in a previous video. But I thought the actual um, superglue would probably um, seep its way into the MDF. So it would be an absolute pain getting the masking tape off, or probably impossible getting the masking tape off the actual MDF itself. But uh, this works well. Um, normally I find that if I'm using a smaller section of MDF, so a single segment, a small section of MDF, I do need a little bit more adhesion strength than I can get from that standard double-sided sticky tape. So I found in the past uh, some of the 3M, so specifically 3M9087 double-sided sticky tape works really well for stuff like that. So if anyone has any adhesion problems, I'd highly recommend using that particular tape. So the intention here is to actually mill out flat segments and then actually glue the actual flat segments together to form the pattern itself, which will eventually be used for the mould. So I'm doing a 3D milling operation over here, it's essentially using X, Y and Z axis. And since moving to servo, this has become a lot more smoother. I've increased the look ahead in Mac 3 and um, it's seamless between the X, Y and Z stages. So I'm quite happy with this particular setup. Some of the parts came out a lot better than I thought they would. Like this one over here, I've actually put a taper in there. So you saw in the video where in which the end mill is coming along and doing a almost a 3D milling contour path. But um, they came out quite clean. Some of them, however, didn't come out as well, but that's partly because of the programming. I couldn't be bothered to clean it up because I was running out of time when programming it. But this is absolutely fine for what I need it to be. I'm just going to put a filler there to put a rad on there, which I'll show you in a bit. So they're fine. And um, I couldn't leave them flat because pulling the mould out with that distance there would pull the sand. So um, there's a two degree taper on these. So here I'm gluing up the segments using some Evo stick fast setting glue. The glue pretty much is dry after about 30 minutes. It has enough holding strength so I can take off the clamps, which, which is useful because I can use the clamps elsewhere. So I've actually used some half inch steel um, 
almost guides the rods that you see put in. Um, they work quite well actually, they uh, line the parts quite nicely, so going forward I think I'll probably continue using that method. Um, I'm always, I am always remove the rods after I've uh, glued up sections just in case the actual rods glue themselves to the actual pan. So, um, but they work well for alignment. So I'm doing some sanding with about 120 grit sand over here. Most, most segments came out okay, some areas had quite a lot of chatter, so I filled this in with, with some two-part wood filler. Um, the wood, wood filler works well, but I need to fix the chatter problems. And so part of it was because of a long cutter, and another part of it was because of my angle of bearing or contact bearing setup, I suspect anyway. Um, over here, I've got the belt sander, and I'm going to actually sand in a two degree taper on the ends. So these are where the core sits. This is just to help me pull out the pattern from the actual sand mold. And this works out quite well. Uh, going forward, if I have chat problems, um, I think the parts would come out a lot better with minimal finish required. I actually ended up finishing um, most of the sand in using an orbital sander because it was an absolute pain to, to um, just sand through the wood filler and whatnot. But um, yeah, this worked well. So I'm using a solvent based paint over here, the actual paint itself is a foundry grade paint, um, I believe it's from John Byrne but I don't actually know because, or I don't know the name of it because I picked it up from a mate of mine who owns a foundry, but um, it's really nice, nice because it dries pretty fast, it leaves almost like a chalky like consistency um, but it pulls really nicely out of the sand. You can use any sort of paint but I would steer clear of water based paints for MDF just because the surface tends to balloon up because it absorbs the moisture. If you're going to use a water-based paint, maybe seal off the MDF with some PVA glue or something, but um, a solvent-based paint normally works fine. The key is just surface prep. Sand between coats, maybe put two coats on and get the surface as smooth as possible. And then use something like talc or cork, chalk or something when you're actually pulling out the mould, so as your parting powder, etc. But yeah, if you do get the chance to use a foundry grade paint, I would highly recommend it. It's just had a little bit more success and the moulds are just a little bit easier to pull out the mould. Um, and um, it's really easy to apply and dries quite quickly. So for those that are actually interested, I'm building a spindle assembly for the CNC, which hopefully is going to have a bit better low end speed. So this is for like machining ferrous materials and whatnot. CNC is probably not stiff enough to take advantage of it, but the intention is maybe to move this to a much stiffer machine in the future. So at the heart of it, I've got the ATC. So the ATC itself, I um, bought it from AliExpress. It's a 12,000 RPM BT30 automatic tool change spindle cartridge. Um, and it's driven through this belt arrangement, so I can uh, switch the pulley arrangements around. But at the moment, it's set to give a 2.7 to 1 ratio, so that puts a maximum speed to about 8,000 RPM because that actual um, spindle motor is rated to 3,000 RPM. But I can also switch that around to get the low end torque, um, which will probably be beneficial in machining the ferrous materials. For the actual spindle motor itself, I'm using. Um, 1.8 kilowatt servo drive 
Um, the servo drive is not rated to be a spindle motor, but it's cheap. <clears throat> so my fix for this problem is to put a fan at the top of it and a 3D printed shroud. Um, but in essence, I'm probably not going to be running it very long. I'm not going to load it very high, so I'm hoping for my use, the servo will probably hold out. But time will tell. Um, I'm using a 100mm diameter pneumatic cylinder over here. It's got a 5mm stroke, so this should actually be fine and open and closing that pedal. And then the plate itself is just, I think it's 3 quarters thick aluminium, just 6061 I think, aluminium, which we're going to machine up on the CNC. So, <clears throat> all in all, I'm hoping the system works, and in the next video, we're going to be casting this bracket. So I'm going to be making the mould, and I'm going to be pouring the metal into the mould. So stick around if you want to watch that.